carbon dioxide is coming out from your breath right here. Can I sell that? I would love to sell that to get rich. <laughs> For the lay audience, I think we ought to start asking the basic question that we should tell the lay audience at least should know. How many people do know that how many percent of this carbon dioxide, if you grab this amount of air here, how much carbon dioxide do you think it is? How many percent? I mean, you'll be amazed. Even some of those very, very educated people do not know that number. Okay? The number actually is not 1%, it's not 10%, it's not 0.4%, uh, it's actually 0.04%. <laughs> and that's how small it is. And then let's say over the last 250 years, the amount that it has changes is basically 0.01%, which is basically one penny out of your $100. And then they are telling you that because of that change, that the planet is doomed to blow itself up in some sense. You call this a science fiction or some kind of a true science that, uh, <laughs> that one should really entertain it seriously. As a scientist, we must, of course, entertaining the idea and the hypothesis to see whether some, there are some validity to that sort of concern and uh, that sort of uh, level of questioning. Sorry, but my humble opinion is that this issue has been so highly politicized to the point where anybody who have any sense about science ought to stand up and try to reject this notion in which that cutting CO2 emission is a scientific proposition. It's simply a social political agenda that has to be sort of uh, said as such. I mean, you can still say that, of course, because if it's out of the realm of science, then at least the politicians should stop pretending to say that you know, the science has given them the green light to go ahead to call for everybody in the US and in fact the rest of the world to cut their carbon dioxide emission or tell India or, or folks in Africa to not use electricity. I mean, just simply unethical and immoral to do that. I, I don't know who has that kind of uh, <coughs> charge to be able to insist on such behavior. Are you familiar with the carbon trading markets? For instance, the one, there's a, I, an exchange here in Chicago. Yes, uh, that, by the way, you, if you want to know a bit of note of confidence, I mean, Richard Sandor, the person who's in charge of this uh, CCX, the Climate Exchange, uh, uh, Carbon, uh, Climate Exchange uh, uh, Commission, He's actually recently just sold it for against, I don't know, $600 million to another company. I mean, let's show you no confidence that he has. And for those people who don't know about the price of this carbon, I actually remember the history. It's roughly started in 2003 or so. If you look at the price of this thing, it's very, very interesting. <clears throat> it went, it, it started trading at, you know, basically I would say a dollar of it per you know tons of uh, carbon dioxide and the price actually shot up to about seven dollars at some time and then as, as today's or even the last one year the price has actually dropped at about five cents to ten cents per ton and then you know you tell me that what 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 price of carbon that you wish to fix it at i mean these people are still talking that we should start at some level like uh, you know i don't know ten dollars and twenty five dollars per, per ton of carbon dioxide where now you could easily get it for five cents Nobody wants this. Carbon dioxide is coming out from your breath, right here. Can I sell that? I would love to sell that to get rich. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, it, it's such a pleasure always t talking to you. Uh, this is my pleasure, Ed. And uh, I wish you could give us just a little of your background when, when you were doing um, more work at, at the university. Well, my background has always been in science. I've always been very curious about how things work. And then these questions of climate is actually a very interesting one. How does climate change? How does weather change? How do we get the weather? And how do we even get season? And so it, one thing leads to another, of course, that you have to study this issue in a most open-minded way and most objective way, as all scientists should, because there should be no if or but about this. Everybody ought to be able to use the standard data. If anybody asks for your data, you ought to freely give it to, so on and so forth. And then I guess I'm lucky enough to be, uh, to be invited to work at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics as a postdoctoral fellow. That's about 20 years ago, so I'm fairly old now. And uh, it's been 20 years since I've been studying this issue. I'm still getting at it. I mean, I've been more or less successful in some sense because uh, as of uh, last year, I was able to formulate a very interesting 
uh, scientific hypothesis in which how I could explain that the sun could affect the climate system on every 500, I mean 50 to 500 years changes and that itself is a very promising I guess uh, uh, avenue to for further research and I would consider this my little accomplishment. Thank you really soon. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah.